Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. Hope you've all had a, a great Christmas and uh, hopefully this is my first video of uh, 2021 so hopefully it's going to be a, a better 2021. Now I said at the end of my last video that I was going to do a review on this first. It's a um, Alexa operable and a remote switch that I can switch your immersion on and off with. Now I'm in the process of doing that video. I only finished fitting it yesterday, so it is now installed. Um, but I'll be going through the full instructions on how to use it in my next video. The reason being that I'm doing this one first is that in the process of fitting that, I've got myself this. Now I've been meaning to get myself one of these for a while now. It's a feral uh, crimping kit from Amazon. Now, what it is, with, um, if you don't know, the, the general consensus of opinion is that you're better off, if you're using a stranded wire, where it goes into the terminal that you attach it to, plug socket or whatever, uh, a, pl a three pin plug or whatever, or an amplifier, anything like that, it's better if you use a ferrule than just pushing the wire in and tightening the screw. The reason being, as you'll probably know, as you tighten the screw down, it spreads some of the multi-strands apart. So not the whole surface area of the cable is making actual contact. Some of it isn't making good contact with the metal. So on something as important as an, immer an immersion heater car uh, carrying a three kilowatt load, you do want a good contact for your, for your wire into the terminals of the switch or the junction box or whatever. Now, you can tin the end of the wires with a bit of solder, but when you're working in a cupboard or on the floorboards or something like that, it's not easy just getting your soldering iron in there. Plus, it doesn't matter too much in a house, which is static, but if you're doing it in your car where there's a lot of vibration and movement, which is the reason to use flexible wires and not solid core ones. You don't want anything too solid that may wick up the strands of the wire. So when you solder the end of it to make it a solid connector, some of that solder might wick up there. And so you're, uh, you're destroying the flexibility and it could flex and sort of snap there. So the best thing to use and loads and loads of websites uh youtube channels websites will tell you this there's loads going into detail why it's why it's best more than i can say is to use a ferrule which is just a slide over piece of very thin copper tube i'll show you in a second that slides over and crimps in place so i got myself this only arrived yesterday and i used it to do the uh so if we look now this is the one i got and this is the uh, which is the one i got it was this one i got this amazon's choice the reason being i went through a few and most of them tended to come as you see there with 1200 ferrules this one came with 1800 and it wasn't any dearer they're all about 19 99 20 quid this one seemed to come with 1800 there was this one down here which looked good great deal limited time deal only 11 quid not as many ferrules 770 but it did have some of the bigger ones which i would use so i would have got that but when i clicked on it it was uh, delivery date 25th of january or something like that so it's out of stock at the moment there's some some with like crazy prices i mean look at this I dare say it's fantastic quality, but 140 quid just for a crimper. So, like I say, that's the one I got, that one there. And uh, this is it here. I'll show you. So in the box, we get the actual ferrules themselves and the crimping tool. Now the way they work is there's instructions on the back. Gives you the instructions. This thing here 
evidently is to adjust the amount of tension required to crimp but i just left it set how i got it feels fine and if you look again there you'll see as you do it then jaws close in like that i'll show you a bit clearer here a bit of filmed earlier on So you just put the ferrule over the end of the wire, insert it in there and crimp it on. So I'll show you me doing that now. So just got a bit of uh, flex here, some uh, wire cutter, uh, wire strippers, put that in there. So you would strip that off twist the end round and then you would pick the little card insert in here and there's a set of instructions Where are we? again showing you how to use it all and you would pick the size of ferrule you need to go over that now for this this little tiny and you would cut it it's a bit hard to show you on here but obviously this wire as it stands now is too long so you snip that off but then this red one is about the right size push that over like so and then Insert that into the tool and just crimp it up on it here. So, uh, as you can see, it does a really good job. I'll show you this in a separate picture. You can see there how neat it is. Now, you do have to make sure you use the right color on the wire. And on this one, just to show you, I crimped on a grey colour, which was too big for it. And if you, again, I'll have to uh, film this separately, I think. The, if you look at the end of that, if you use too big a crimp on the wire, you can see that's what it does. It spreads it out and it doesn't form a perfect square. I did that on a cable, realised I'd put the wrong size on and I just, I could pull it off, pull the cable out so it showed it hadn't crimped it properly. So basically that's it. If you're using a solid cable, um, like most uh, mains cable is now, uh, for, for the hefty stuff you use for uh, sockets, obviously you don't have to use a ferrule, but uh, even this earth cable, it's not really flexible, more uh, stranded but it is made up of about six different cores as you can see so again you would use on that one the ideal fit would be that gray one put the gray one in there clamp it down and again as you can see it does a really great job you can see fully pressing it into making a lovely square shape all around and the set goes uh, from the biggest ones which are these which are um, 7 gauge 10 millimeter 10 square millimeter diameter ones the red ones right down to these tiny tiny little white ones see how small they are and that's 22 AWDG, which I think is average wire gauge. Um, and that's half a millimetre, half a uh, 0.5 of a square millimetre diameter. So really, really tiny stuff. 
so obviously these being a square section these will fit much better in the actual square you'll have seen them on um, inputs to say amplifiers and stuff it's a square receptacle if you will with like a, a screw down flap that will grip it absolutely fantastic if it's going in a round terminal with just a screw on obviously that's going to splay it out a bit but it's still going to make much much better contact than the actual multi strands themselves so hope that's been of some use just to show you what uh, a feral crimper looks like and the reason uh, i've used one like i said i will be doing it and showing it in use so again on this which i fitted yesterday like i say but i want to give it a couple of weeks give it a full thorough check out i've worked out on the app how to set on off times but i've not managed to get it to link with alexa yet i'm going to carry on experimenting with that and give it a full couple of weeks try out use it two or three times to heat heat the water for an hour and uh, check it's all running as it should and uh, so that's going to be the next one keep an eye out for that Hope this has been some use. Thanks for watching. See you soon.